Hey there, welcome back and thanks for joining me. All my supplies and equipment are down in the description box below. If they're not listed there, they are definitely in the Amazon store. And if you like this video, hit that subscribe button. If you wanna be notified when new videos come out, hit that notification bell and likes, comments, and questions are always welcomed. Whew, okay. Okay, let's dive in. So I've already drawn this pumpkin here and Probably the easiest way to do that is go up to a window in the daylight, put that on the window, put that over it, you can see through it, you sketch it out and draw it. Um, so all mine are drawn with this once I draw this out. And let me show you a super duper easy way to do a pumpkin. Okay. Take you an oval like this. Here's a center but go three-fourths way up, and that's going to be where your stem comes out. Don't look like a stem. There we go. Something like that. Anyhow, you want to come under here and draw one of your ovals. Go up a little bit. Don't start at the same point again. Go up a little bit, and you want to do this. Then the next one's a little higher up. Like that this way all these centers aren't starting in the same spot because if you're looking at a pumpkin that's they're not doing that they're all staggered a little bit so you keep wanting to move that and then just you a little one like this and there you go and then what I do is I take a Sharpie, I outline it, get it dark like this, and that's what I go after. You can make these taller if you want to do that. And make a tall pumpkin. I mean, so you can do tons of stuff. But I'll start with that oval. Okay. Also... When I'm doing outlines with watercolor, I use these um, lighter colored pencils. This is a 6H, and there's a lot, all the numbers that go, you know, like 1 to 10 or something like that. But this is the degree of darkness the lead will put out. And then I always get a white eraser. Okay. Well, there is my card. Now, before I start, I don't have a line here. This is just a, what is this? This is a six by nine, which is going to be a six by four and a half. And the way I come up with that is start with your envelope. Always start with your envelope first. So this envelope is a six and a half by four and three quarters or 4.75. So I come down about a half inch smaller. That gives you a quarter inch all the way around. But since my paper is a nine by 12, I just cut it in half and make it a six, um, six by nine. So it makes it a four and a half. So it's a little snugger on the sides. It still goes in easy. Um, but that's how I come up with my card sizes. I'll start with an envelope. Now, this little tool is what I use to crease my cards with. I've already got mine marked for this size. And you go down like this. Now, I like this little tool, but what I really prefer is a little stylist with balls on the end. It just seems to lay it in there a little more harder, crisper. But in any case... This is the tool to have. And then when you go to bend it, it just bends. It's already straight. All right, let's, let's get rolling. So I'm using um, a number six. Now, I love my black velvet brushes. Um, they're silver black velvet is what it's called. This is a 3000S absolutely love these they are so well balanced um some brushes you kind of fight with this one is is on point love it okay <clears throat> the thing with watercolors you want to start with your lightest color first 
and I'm going to go in here and, and this is, <laughs> always keep your dirty palettes. I don't know. I have two or three of them, but this is the one that I do all the pumpkins out of. So these are all the colors I use. And depending on which one, which one do we want to do? I'm going to do orange in the back. Let's do orange in the back. I just color in all the orange because this is your lightest color. This is the one that's going to be kind of the least seen, but this is just your lightest. You want to start with your lightest. Now, if you're doing multiple cards, and I would say go ahead and do it because if you're painting one, you might as well paint 10. Um, do that on all of them. That way you're not constantly rinsing your brush out and wasting paint in that water. I just keep adding and adding and adding and I don't have to rinse my brush out. But we're just doing the one, so here we go. Where is my cloth at? I like, I know what I was doing with it. I've got a, an annoying fly. And here he is. Thank you. Um, yeah, he's on my nerves. So, I was probably chasing him with the other one. I don't know where I put it. Anyhow. Now I go over here and I get my blue. I want to water it down pretty good. The, uh, the sides are going to be covered. All you're really doing here is putting it on the center. That's the only place it's, you're going to see it. And let's do green. Very light green. Now, these are just indicators. I'm going to put dark green on top of this. We're not going to see them. But I just kind of wanted to put something you'd see. Now, as I'm doing the outline, I'm just kind of scribbling on the outline a little bit. I'm going to leave some center because I want to have some white in the very center of it. help with the color now when you get used to doing this you don't have to draw these I just did for this And go here and get a little bit of a brown. Ooh, dark. There. Now, also, when you're doing more than one, I would take this and set it aside. By the time I got back, to doing some of the orange all this is dry since I'm just doing one I don't have to dry it in between that's pretty dry anyway okay so there's the lightest of all my colors now I'm going to go to the next darkest color so I'm going to do some of the orange now, just the fact that I'm putting some of the orange, even if it's the same exact color as this, it's going to be darker because now you're adding, you're, you're layering it. It's going to get darker, even if you're not darkening the color itself. Now, I'm going to do about two-thirds of this, and I'm going to leave the center of each section. Now, this is going to feel weird, and you're going to think you messed up because this is, even though I've done... Dozens of these, I still are like, yee, that just seems, but don't, just just keep going. You're fine. I always want to get my dark right there because that's going to indicate that the pumpkin's moving in and there's shadow there. And then I just do a little bit there. And don't be afraid to let your brush get on the dry side because that really gives some cool effects too. And I'll show you that. 
So you can see what I've done before. So let's say your brush is on the dry side and you just take it sideways. And look at that, that's texture right there. Versus, you know, something solid like that. And the stuff you can do with that is pretty cool. So keep that in mind. That is also an option to let this get drier and make those lines. Now, I will try to do that a little bit later. These right here are still foundation stuff. Now, something you can also do, and I'll play a little bit with it, um, you can add some, like, orange to this one. Um, that's pretty good to do, too. And I'll go ahead and do that, because this one we'll see straight in one color. This one, and I'm going to do it later. Um, I'm going to put some orange in it. I think that'd be that'd be pretty awesome. All right, let's do green. Now, I want to add a little bit more color to my water. Actually, no. The green, I want to add a lot. I'm only doing two colors in green, the lightest and the darkest, because there's not a lot of room. I forget. And I'm going to just kind of do some of the outside. Indicate a lot. Now I'll just kind of scribble, and however it hangs on the paper, it hangs. But I like it. There. And water drop. Let's go back. Oh, nope, we got to do our, some of our stem. Let's do some of that. And paint on my hand. There we go. All right. So there's that. Let's go back to orange. Now I've got some red over here because I had my orange, light orange here. And I've kept adding some red to it. I'm going to add a little bit of burgundy. That's a lot of burgundy. Uh, tell you what. Let's add some yellow to that. That's still dark. That would be my darkest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull some of it over here. And then I'm going to add water to it. Still the same tone, just lighter. Or hue. Hue, tone, I don't know. It's the same color, just lighter. Now, I don't do this one as much, but I still want this level in here. Now, if you're not liking that, if you feel like there's too much, 
Go ahead and dab your brush off and then just kind of do that dry mark through here. Kind of just adds a little bit ever so slightly without taking it away. There. And I might do a little bit of that on the blue. Now let me do a bluish, a little bit more blue. I hope you can see that. A little bit more blue. And then on the brown, I'm going to add a little bit black, darken that brown up a little bit. And then I'm going to come over here and add a little bit more water. Now, let me get all that dry. I moved the camera over because I kind of felt like you might not could see. And I didn't really check to see if I was angling my hand anymore. Whoops. Oh, let's see. Can you see? Yeah. All right. I hate when they teach and you're they're like this and you're like, yeah, I didn't see any of that. <laughs> All right, back to our orange. I'm going to do this a little bit darker. darker blue Now, on the green, I still think I can get a little darker. So, I'm going to go straight to my color, mix it up to where it's thick, highly pigmented, and I'm just going to kind of make some, some movement in here, not a ton. That was it. And see, like I say, 10 other cards, I would not have rinsed all that paint off. All right. Now I'm going to go in with a little bit of black. And I'm going to go in here and just touch on some of this. All right. 
right, this is my darkest of my, it's red now. But it's really going to bring out that color and make it just pop crazy. Now, if you're thinking, hmm, a lot of light and just some of the darkness doesn't seem to go. That's when you can kind of go in here and water some of this down. Just kind of pull some of it down a little bit. Or dry your brush and do that dry mark. See how that just tweaks it a little bit? So, yeah, something like that. You can still go in here and put some of your lines. So, see? Go ahead and tweak it. Don't be, don't be afraid what you end up with. All right, the blue. Now you can go in with as dark a blue as you want. You can go in with um, Payne's Gray if you want to, which is a gorgeous blue. Um, so you can make your, your final lines as dark as you want them. But remember, I'm going to go in here and do some pinning, which is with black. So I, I kind of compensate for that. But if you weren't, yeah, by all means, go in here and really make your last few marks like crazy dark. All right, so here is what I'm going to do with my curly cues. Now, I'm going to try to back up so I don't control it and just do it fast. Whatever you end up is what you end up with. Not necessarily. There we go. That's better. Um, yeah. <laughs> and that's it. That is all I'm going to do with that. I could put a flower right here if I wanted. But I think I'm going to leave it. Now, I go in with a little bit of dark. This one's got some red running in it, so hey, let's do that. Dry it off a tinkling, and that. And there we go. Let me get that dry. There's what a flower could look like. If I was going to put a flower, I'd put the yellow. But I think I'm going to leave it. But this is another card, so go check out that video, too. And I also show how to draw that and all that good stuff. Okay, pinning. This is one of my favorite things to do. Alright, I'm going to start up here and not even stay in the lines. That's the cool thing about this. Your pin is just another layer to look at. I go outside, I'm inside the color, just like that. I do not, and I'm not drawing one line like this. One, I can't do it. Two, I like this. It, it gives it, it stays with the theme of the whole thing is nothing's an exact clean line. It's all indicating And that's what I'm wanting to do. Because you know what it is. You know, I just, I don't have to fill in all the gaps. The person looking at this knows exactly, this is a pumpkin. This is typically what they look like. And you can do this marking. I like to do long, short, long, short. You know, a bunch of short ones and one long.
paint like I don't care. I do care, but I paint like I don't. Those are the ones I like the best. Those are the ones I feel like I truly just let my mind go. Now the leaves. See how I'm not staying in them? I've created a whole layer of leaves that weren't there before. I changed what kind of leaf it was. I'll change the shape. So now you got two leaves to look at. You've got the color and then you've got the pinned one. And there you go. And I don't think I'm going to splatter this one. I usually do. See? But I don't think so. I think I'm going to leave it. And I like it off down here in the corner. And see? Isn't that cute? Cute. Okay. Now, y'all go do this. Y'all go have fun. Show me what you do. I like to see your stuff. So, go have fun. We'll see ya.